This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us today. With me is Richard Fields, and from the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, Leon Brathwaite. Gentlemen, Judicial Watch uncovered through a Freedom of Information Act Freedom of Information Act request, I can talk today, that the California government was in cahoots, I suppose. I'm not sure how to describe this one, to be honest. In, with, cahoots, uh, will, in cahoots will work. <laughs> with social media and the uh, tech companies to remove content that California government found objectionable, I guess, is the best way to describe this. I'm not. What do you guys think about this thing? I think cahoots is a, a very weak word to describe what's going on. What, what's happening is California government and federal government, for that matter, is telling uh, media platforms, you either uh, take out what we don't like or look out for regulation that you won't like coming down the road. And the media companies are very happily saying, okay, uh, sir, yes, sir, how high should I jump? I mean, this this is disturbing on so many levels okay i mean when you really think about it i'm sure it's illegal and probably and, and illegal and unconstitutional but what we have here going on is the government is censoring us indirectly through the through the social media to these uh tech giants so they are telling they are, they have their liability protection with uh, section 230 which protects them from all liability for things that people individuals post on their platforms but then they are turning around and deciding what content they, they were going to keep on their platforms and go a step further. They are deciding with the help of the government what, what, um, what content they will keep on their platforms. This is disturbing. And I think somebody should be doing something about this immediately. But Otherwise, this is going to continue and get worse. It's one thing for a company to say to of their own free will to decide, you know, we don't want that type of discussion on our on our platform. I don't want that type of discussion on my server. You're perfectly, as an individual or as a company, you're perfectly um, reasonable in making that choice. But when the government says, you know, we don't like this type of speech and we think you shouldn't have that on your platform, and if you don't do anything about it, we may decide to put some regulations on you, or maybe not, or maybe just drag you in front of yeah, you're just going to do it just to not have to deal with the hassle, aren't you? Yeah, no, I mean, what we have is uh, uh, really 1984 uh, just coming in through the back door or the front door, yes. as, it, as it were. Uh, we've got yes. a situation where, uh, I mean, at, at the larger, more philosophical level, the antidote, antidote to bad speech or incorrect speech or uh, uh, however you want to describe it, speech that is not socially... Uh, productive, the antitude to bad speech is more speech, good speech, yes. uh, con contradicting speech, a speech that points out the error of the original speaker's way and let the uh, free market of, in the free market of ideas, let the most cogent, most uh, uh, practical, most uh, 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 c comprehensive, let, let the best speech win. Don't say we are going to ordain one line of speech, AE the or IE the uh, the political party line of either the red or the blue uh, yes. to to win. Let the the speech win, which is the most persuasive. Well, and that and that's just a point. Who are these wise angels that that can be, that can make a determination as to what is good good speech or bad speech, or what is misinformation? Or what is what is not misinformation? Who are the wise angels can do this? So, but but the, but the point about all of this though, these companies have liability protection against anything that people place on their platform. So why do they have to take content down? Why? They don't. They don't need to. I don't. I well, mean, they don't, I don't need. They don't need to. Anyway, to. But that's a different issue. Yeah, they don't need to, but they may need to in the future. If I regulated more, uh, more uh, drastically, and that's of course the the implicit, unstated but uh, under the breath stated uh, threat the government uh, throws up to all of the social media companies. You either do it our way, say what you know, take down what we think you should take down uh, on your own, or we'll force you in another way later. 
Well, and and what's the strange thing is we sit here and we have the media, like the New York Times, helping uh, the government enforce these these kinds of um, censorship. Here we exactly. have a, a New York Times running an article about how Twitch is finding a financial lifeline for extremists. Again, you know, now how to define an extremist? I don't know. You know, they're, they're, you know, New York Times just call them extremists, and they're somehow making money on Twitch, and that's a bad thing. And the fact is that our media journalists, the people who should be arguing the most loudly against the government interfering this way, are sitting here leading the charge. What, what is you know, uh, we have. Go ahead, Liam. It's fine, Richard. Go ahead. It's fine. You guys are being too nice to each other, Richard. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, what we have, you know, it's, yeah, I think it's emblematic that we we call the Republicans the Reds and the Democrats the Blues. It's the Bloods and the Crips fighting over who gets to be in control <laughs> of government. And it's really not an exaggeration by any stretch of the imagination. We really have two criminal gangs trying to be in control. And, uh, and if you're not one of those criminal gangs, you're not going to get hurt. But 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 the point but 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 the point is though the uh, I mean along with James point James uh, James's point we have the media helping this process along now anybody to the right of Bernie Sanders is somewhat is is is, is some kind of extremist I mean this QAnon people I mean I don't I don't care much for them and some of their damn nonsense but they have a right to speak like everybody else and if if they can raise money through whatever means they can, so be it. More power to them. But the media yeah, is trying to Yeah, QAnon has a right to, to speak. AOC them. has a right to speak. I'm sorry? You know, the Castros, and you know, the Castros now thankfully out of power in Cuba, they had a right to speak. They don't have a right to uh, censor other people's speak, speech, but they do have the right to speak. Marxists sure. and uh, Nazis all have a right to speak. Well, you know, and they all should be laughed off the uh, out of the public square. But everybody has the right to speak. Right. Well, that's what yeah, the so first that amendment back, is that all gets about. Back to the point that if if QAnon could raise money to to promote their their free speech and their conspiratorial nonsense, let them do so, and and let us see if we could replace that with good speech. Not people trying to ban them, or with the media trying to to demonize them and ban them at every turn and twist. Well, danger festers in darkness and so if you shove these people into the corners into the dark corners of society they not only do they kind of get to fester out of sight they get to make a point say hey look society's being unfair to us everybody else gets to speak all these other <laughs> radicals get to speak but we can't and so they well, actually end up with yeah, a point and, You're actually and would you rather and would you rather have these idiots uh spouting their nonsense on facebook or twitter or youtube or would you rather have them doing it on the dark web where they can uh, pick up followers who uh, buy into 100% of their of their nonsense? At least sure. when they're subjected to the light of day, people can see this is, you know, this is, you know, what they're saying is BS. Because other people will be able to point it out. If they're hidden away, nobody would, you know, the, you know, the New York Times or anybody else won't be able to point nonsense. There won't be any... Uh, fact checkers, so to speak, to say you know this is this is just silly, uh, and and you know that's that's why free speech works and censorship does not. Well, the 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 the, the best disinfectant for bad speech is the light of good speech. It's the best disinfectant, and that is what we should yeah. allow to happen instead of, like you say, pushing them onto the dark web where everybody. Where every every little clown could 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 latch onto their damn nonsense. It's best we have it in the light of good speech, where everybody can debate their issues and show them what idiots they are. Yep, you cannot fix what you cannot see. Speaking exactly. of speaking about fixing something, the California Democrats have come out and decided to stay on message in opposing the Newsom recall. They're, the Democrat Party has they're not going to put up a candidate. Apparently, they're just going to kind of cross their fingers and hope Newsom beats the recall. Unless there's some unknown Democrat who's throwing their name up on the ballot that I kind of, <laughs> unless there's somebody doing a long shot, no, but no serious Democrat is going to run. The party is kind of lined up behind Newsom. And, you know, we're going to see if the coastal elites show up to vote, I guess. I'm not sure what's going to happen on this thing. 
Well, you know, it's interesting. You've got a hand, actually, uh, a number of Republicans running. You've got Cox, who was soundly defeated in the uh, the last election, and and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, O.C. from uh, ex congressman from uh, from Sacramento area, and and a couple of other uh, big name guys. Uh, Kate, Caitlin Jenner is also the, running, and so is um, so is uh, Kevin uh, yeah. Kevin uh, Falcona from San Diego. Right, but but there is actually an interesting uh, wrinkle to this whole thing. The Republicans are obviously going to split the vote, uh, and yes. there's one Libertarian, Jeff Hewitt, who is a county supervisor, has won he he won the election to come in Riverside County after being the mayor of a, of a little town in that county for a number of years, and. He is the only libertarian running, and he is a superlative campaigner, a guy who knows exactly how to go about actually winning a campaign because he's demonstrated how to do it in one of the largest counties in the state. And, uh, uh, you know, it's the way, the, if I, as I understand it, the way the recall works is the a candidate with the largest vote total doesn't have to be a majority, uh, but the largest plurality wins. Plurality, if, yes. How, is it, how does it go if if uh, if uh, if uh, does not get a majority of the votes, or or if a majority of the votes are in favor of the recall? Yeah, you there's no works. runoff. There's no runoff. Yeah, it's a two-stage thing. You vote you do, you vote for the you vote to recall Newsom, and then you vote for who you want to replace him. Is I think uh, is, yes. is yeah, it's a two-stage. Right, and if and if and if the vote goes to and the vote goes to recall Newsom, then whoever has the plurality of right. uh, votes becomes governor. That's how Schwarzenegger was able to defeat uh, Gray Davis. He didn't have a, a majority. He had a plurality, if I remember right. And, uh, and uh, Jeff could do the same thing. Well, well, that, that, that will certainly sh shake up the political landscape here in California. And we need to be shaken up. There's no doubt about that. But it's kind of interesting that I find that the Democrats are lining up be behind Newsom. They must have been, they must be getting very confident that he'll survive the first question. And, and that's a little bit disturbing because I think that man is incompetent and corrupt too. See, quite quite frankly. I think that man should be replaced. Even well, Leon, though go ahead. Jason. Well, Leon, there's something just before we came on the air, I saw an article pass on the pass on my news feed that the state employee engineers, state employee unions have decided to donate two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that to the to the Newsom campaign. No, no, I'm not surprised. So you know these these public employee unions are all on board. Well, of course they are because they're going to get. Course. They're hiring more and more public employees. You know these public these are not my grandfather's unions. I keep trying to tell people this. They're not my <laughs> grandfather's unions. <laughs> you know my grandfather's unions was a small union that, that worked for the people. These these are big businesses. These public employees yeah. are big business. Yeah. They're not they're not what we think of as when we think of unions anymore and. Speaking of thinking of unions, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled that truckers are no longer exempt from AB5. So now here in California, your independent trucker is now has to be an employee of somebody in order to drive. The, it's all very confusing. And I think the confusion is probably worse than the actual what they're trying to accomplish because it, it's so confusing. There's so many new rules. There's so many exemptions and loopholes. And you just throw up your hands and say, oh, forget it. Now, that's what I've done. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you take a look at all of all, I mean, and I mean all of labor law, it's all uh, a way for government to get its heavy hand into what should be a mutual decision between an employer and an employee. That's what we should have. That's what a, a free market is all about. Uh, yes. Two people deciding to change, exchange money for labor. And all of the labor laws are trying to either stack the deck in favor of unions or stack the neck in favor of employers, depending on the state that you're in. And it's all simply unnecessary and counterproductive. We need to have ex exactly zero labor laws. Let whoever wants to hire somebody go ahead and hire whoever they want to hire at whatever rate they want to hire them at. And uh, if they hire the best people, they'll win in uh, the competitive marketplace. If they uh, make a mistake and you know, through prejudice or through other uh, other uh, uh, character defects, hire people who are 
less than optimum for the job involved, then they're going to fail in the marketplace. Indeed. Well, you know, I used to be I used to be an independent um, independent contractor. I was I was teaching at the time for for a private university, and you know, I really didn't need the government to come along and save me. I really don't need that. I mean, the relationship between me and my employer was a relationship between me and my employer, as was determined by the marketplace, as Richard rightfully said. But what is happening right now is the government are coming along and picking winners, winners, winners and losers. They are trying to define the relationship between employer and employee, and they want to tell us what is essential and what is not. Just look at what happened during the pandemic. Is the government laying its heavy hand, just like you said, Richard, laying its heavy hand all over us? Pretty soon they're going to be telling us what to do inside our homes. That's what's going. To, that's what's coming. If it's if it have not already started. Yeah, well, oh, it's, it started. Uh, it's, it's already started. Absolutely. Oh, well, so, they're going to tell you what kind of what do you have? You can't buy a gas stove anymore. Now you can only buy electric stoves. Okay, there you go. Yeah, it's 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 you know it's already started. Now I was an at bay gig worker up until what last year the pandemic started and. This whole AB5 thing completely changed not just the way your relationship with the people who you, you know, take money from, but it changed the culture of the business. Right. We, used, we used to be a tight-knit culture, tight-knit community where you would help each other. You, you know, if you come across, like, you collect scooters. You come across, you get six scooters, you're collecting it. Someone comes around, and you sit there and you talk. You help them out, and you didn't get mad and someone gets half your scooters or whatever. You didn't get mad. You talk. You find out. You trade information. You say, how the heck did you get so many of those things in your car? Like this one guy had 13 scooters in this little Geo Metro. How the heck did you get them in there? <laughs> you know? But nowadays, when you sit there and you talk you talk to them, it's all selfishness. It's all – it's it's essentially like looking to a bunch of, oh, entry-level employees who really don't care. They're there to perform a job. They don't there, they're not there for themselves. They're not there because – they want to be there there because it's just a job for for those of us who used to do it it was there because it was a lifestyle it was what we wanted to do we had built our whole lives around this independence that we got to negotiate with our employ with our employer but not our employer with the people we we did tasks for every day some days i'd work for $20 an hour some days i'd work for 25 some days I'd sit on my couch and say, you know what, you, I don't care how much you pay me, I'm not going to work today. And they couldn't do anything about it because I'm not a, an employee. All right. I, I work whichever days I want. If I want to take a vacation, I don't have to call and ask anybody and say, hey, can I take a vacation this week? No, I just go take a vacation. Indeed. And, and, but, this, this is, this, but you see, this is what happens. Whenever, in general, whenever the government touches something, it always messes it up. It, whether it's, whether it's, it's in, in, in um, the ride share business, whether it's in, in, in the trucking industry, whether it's public education, whatever they do, they always have this one size fit all mentality and they always mess it up for everybody. It's, it's, just a, it's just a disaster having them around. I wish they'll just stick to what the constitution says that they should do. If they'll just stick to it, it will be all right. But what we are seeing right now is the government becoming more and more powerful and our liberties are shrinking more and more. And this is seriously problematic. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have less trouble giving the, the government some, some power if they could fill my freaking potholes well. You know, can we <laughs> actually just do the, the basics first? You know, if they can fill potholes, maybe I can trust them to, to do a vaccine rollout. But they can't fill potholes. As without government, who, who, without government, who would build the roads? Well, maybe they should start with taking care of the roads and stop right there. Well, you know, who's the first person to build the mountain road? It wasn't the government; it was the logging companies. True. And the governments True. came through later and improved those roads. That's how the government built the mountain road. So, uh, government the logging companies will build roads. The factory owners will build roads. The mall owner will build roads. The developer of the of the neighborhood will build roads. It's you can't build a factory without first building a road. You sure, can't do it. Yeah. Or you buy a four, you have to get everything that's four-wheel drive and you don't need roads. You know, it's, it's one of the two. But <laughs> speaking of government incompetence, the U.S. is about to run out of adults who are eager to get the back to get the vaccine. Now, I got mine this week. I well, last Wednesday, I've been sleeping ever since, but that's kind of the 
my biggest uh, oh side effect of the vaccine is I just flipping tired for uh, four days. The yeah, vaccine I got, I got my vaccine. What, what, which vaccine and, did you get? I got the Johnson and Johnson one. Oh, okay. Uh, those. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got mine back in January and February, Pfizer, and the most I got out of it was a sore arm for a day or so. Uh, and you know, th there is a legitimate point to be made that they have not gone through all of the FDA tests that would normally uh, happen with a new drug, and that's actually a good thing. It's actually a good thing. It, it lets the marketplace figure out whether a vaccine is viable rather than a bunch of eggheads sitting on a panel in Washington, D.C. And as uh, so far, it's turned out that the vaccine, uh, with a few very rare exceptions, has been a good thing. And, yes. uh, and I think most people have enough sense to get the vaccine if they feel like they are at risk uh, if they get the coronavirus. Now, there's a lot of people that are simply not at risk getting the coronavirus. Essentially, anybody under the age, I don't know, 30, something like that, they're yeah. just going to get, a, you know, the symptoms of a mild case of the flu. They don't really need to get the virus they, or the vaccine. They can get the, uh, the, uh, the immunity from having the disease. And the yeah. disease is not going to be much worse than the vaccine. So if people don't want to get the vaccine and they're, uh, you know, they're willing to take, the, take that risk and they're healthy enough so that that risk is not, uh, not, a, not a, you know, not unduly uh, uh, bad, you know, I, I say let them go for it. You can get herd immunity two ways, either through the vaccine or through natural immunity exactly. by having contracted the, vi the virus itself. And this, and this was one of the mischaracterizations, I think, in that article that was posted with this, with this, um, with this topic, James, in the sense that they seem to be focusing more. They didn't mention the possibility of gaining some herd immunity through natural immunity, but and and the percentages they lay out there and that kind of stuff did not consider the fact that people are getting naturally immune from having the disease, and a lot of people are walking around who don't even know. That they have the disease, and there's a, there was a big story um, a little while ago in Minnesota. They had to adjust their numbers by some percentage because there are a lot of people who have the disease and don't know that they do, and as a result, they will have the um, the immunity. And that article does not consider that. So this thing about not reaching herd immunity, I'm not sure that is true. I think we will get there. All right, we are not there as yet because a lot of people haven't been fully vaccinated. I have just had one. I've had the Moderna, but I've only had one dose. I will have the next one next week sometime. But the, we will get to herd immunity sooner or later. I mean, and there are a lot of people, I know I know quite a few people who have had um, the coronavirus and they will not be vaccinated because they are naturally immune. But so I, I'm not scared about this herd immunity thing. I think we'll get there. I mean, maybe maybe not as fast as I would like to see, but I think we'll get there eventually. Yeah, I think, well, you know, for those of us who grew up in the 80s, you know, some of us, uh oh, we lost Richard. We lost some of Richard. us, uh, some of us who grew up in the 80s, we, uh, we tried lots of experimental drugs. And, you know, so, you know, trying another one here is probably, we should, probably shouldn't be, <laughs> we probably shouldn't be having too much of a complaint about trying an experimental vaccine <laughs> when, yes. when all the experimental drugs we took back, you know, 30 years ago, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that you know I did it to make my mother happy. You know, I was kind of ambivalent about the whole thing. It's like you know, my mother's going to be happy, and you know, whatever. Yeah, it's it's fine. You know, I I wasn't worried one way or the other. But the media and the government does seem to be have this um, mission focused. It, it's yes, this target fixation. Whether it's yes. the the hurry, they don't seem to look at the wide, the wider perspective right They're, they don't it's like when you're talking about herd immunity they only think of it in terms of vaccine they don't talk about how many people have had the the virus how long does the natural immunity last because we don't actually know these questions yet true so they don't because, but because we don't know them they don't talk about them but we don't know the, these questions on the vaccines either but yet they're making the assumptions on the vaccines and Absolutely. so it's this strange dichotomy i guess that the media and the government has is where they're so focused, narrow focused on, you know, 
the virus and the vaccine that they forget about the economic damage, the psychological damage, and and the well, natural immunities. It, they kind of lost this their, whole lockdown. Yeah, this whole yeah. lockdown happened. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Richard. Go ahead. I was just going to say, what you're looking at is a bunch of epidemiologists who are highly trained in their field and have exactly no training in economics, no training in any other disciplines other than their own, making decisions for the entire uh, population and forgetting about doing trade-offs. And when they are proven wrong, as they have been, just look at the uh, the uh, of infection in Texas versus California, um, versus yes. none, uh, or Florida, or Sweden. Florida, Why? yes. Uh, and you know the, the 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 evidence is that they were wrong. They're not going to admit that they're wrong. They're just going to say, "Well, we didn't lock down quite enough." It's sort of like uh, you know, uh, whenever the government fails, it's never because they did the wrong thing. It's because they didn't do enough of the of the wrong thing. Throw more money at it, and you'll fix it. Well, not exactly. Not when you're throwing money at a, uh, at, a at something that's actually uh, detrimental to your cause. And that's what the government is doing, and pretty much always does. Uh, you, you never see a government program grow, go away. If it doesn't work, it's because they weren't spending enough money. That's what the experts in that particular field will always argue. And ever It always has been that way, and it always will be. That's why the government should be in fewer and fewer things so that free market owners who will fail if they get the, the answer wrong, can go ahead and fail and let somebody else exactly. come in and do it right. Yes. Yeah, I find it interesting that the believers in big government, they hold the, the free market. Well, they call it capitalism, but it's just the free market. Um, they hold the free market to a standard that the free market doesn't hold itself to. The free market never says it's going to be perfect. They actually exactly. really admit they're going to have yes. failures. The government, they sit here and they promise utopia. They continually fail, but somehow they're never responsible. <laughs> Somehow the, the free market is responsible for something they never promised, and yet the government is never responsible for something they do promise. It's, it's uh, of like course. We, we live of in a bizarro world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, un it's unbelievable. It's, un it's unbelievable that these people, like some of these programs, and Richard is right, some of these programs, they, they come into existence, they fail, they produce disasters, but still, you could still, they're still on the books and they're still being funded. Our tax dollars are still paying for it, and they keep going on and on. Well, our program is no longer funded. We are out of time. Thank you all for joining us here on Libertarian Counterpoint. You can catch us here next week. Join us at libertariancounterpoint.com and all your favorite social media outlets. And please remember from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint to love everybody. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint Show. In Sacramento, Channel 17 on Comcast each Thursday at 8 p.m. and each Monday at 5.30 p.m. for the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.